The first method we want to see in numerical methods is the Newton Maxwell's method. And I want, I want to use a simple case of a car to derive the Newton Maxwell's formula. Just a very simple car for the definition of the derivative. So if this is your x1 coordinate system, so if you have for me to make a curve, a simple curve, I will make it to touch the x-axis, to make it simple, meaning when it touches the x-axis, at that point where it touches the x-axis, the y is zero, isn't it? So that I specifically need with one way to make it more simple, to get the formula in its simplest form, isn't it? So, if I have maybe a simple curve like this, you see, always, if you are dealing with an x-y coordinate system, then y is always a function, is in most cases a function of x, isn't it? So in this case, if you say here we have a curve where y is a function of x, then this curve, it can even be y is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, meaning y is expressed in terms of x, so we are saying y is a function of x, isn't it? So if this curve was maybe this, which is y is a function of x, then it will imply here, when I put two points, let me talk of this point and a point here. So if I have two points, I can actually get the gradient, isn't it? Remember the gradient of a curve, you can only get that exactly one point as the, the that small change in the x value tends to zero, you get the gradient at exactly one point, which becomes the derivative, isn't it? So if you for you to get a gradient between these two points, then it means we will have the change in the change in y and the change in x and the change in x, isn't it? So here, if I have this like this, so the x value at this point, when I say at this point the value of x is maybe maybe this point. If this point, if the point in the Cartesian coordinate system is the point x y, isn't it? You see x y is a free drive meaning it can lie anywhere. It can be 0, 1, it can be 1, 1, it can be 1, 1, x, y, isn't it? So an arbitrary point. So if this point is a point x, y, then what does that imply? Y, y is a function of x. So it means where there is where you put f of x, meaning this point is x, f of, f of x, isn't it? So because that is an arbitrary point which can lie anywhere, but in this case, for us to get the derivative of the change in x and the change in y, if that this one is now here, is approximated as a change in x over change in y, meaning that is a straight line. Meaning you are approximating the length of this line, but we need the derivative of the curve that will come later, isn't it? So it means I'm looking for the gradient of this line, but not the derivative of the curve. The derivative of the curve will come in when we get the instantaneous state, meaning when that change tends to zero, isn't it? So the gradient of this line will be change in y over change in x, isn't it? Now a point is point x, y, but y is a function of x, so it is x, f of x, isn't it? So x, f of x, for you to make a point be state, meaning this point has to be different from this point, isn't it? Are you seeing that? Because this point is also going to be the form x, y. So what do you make them distinct? So if you say this point, because we can have this point to be x1, y1, then this one becomes x2, y2, isn't it? If this point is x0, y0, this point becomes x1, y1. There you see? So it means, it means when we have very many points which are distinct, we can have x1, y1, x2, y2, point <coughs> x0, y0, point x4, y4, isn't it? Meaning if I show this point to be x, m, f of x n because it's like y n, isn't it? Then this point will become so what? It will become x n plus 1, comma, f of, comma what? Comma 0, because it is along the x axis, meaning the y value is 0. Are you seeing that? So why am I saying when I put this point to be x n? Because f of that is y, see there? Meaning if n is 0, here it's like I have x naught, y naught, then 0 plus 1 here will become x1, y1, isn't it? If n is 1, here we become this point will be x1, y1, and y is a function of that, isn't it? 
then this point becomes x to y because n is 1, so this becomes x2. So you see n is now generally taking all points into consideration, isn't it? Because we are going to deal with iterative methods. Do you see that? We'll be going to iterate if this x0, we go to x1, x2. So it means we must come with a general formula which take into consideration all of the points until we get where it suffices or where we get the rules, isn't it? So we've defined the two points. So how do we get the gradient? The gradient is given by changing, changing y over changing x. Over changing x. That's how we get the gradient, isn't it? changing y over changing x. So what is changing y? So it is this point y here minus y here. And the y here is f of x and isn't it? Yes. Minus y here is, is 0. So changing y is f of x and minus 0. Are you seeing that? Then, so this is the gradient changing y over changing x. Are you seeing that? Then changing x is this is xn, maybe this is now xn. Then this is xn plus 1. So it is xn minus? Yes. So it is the second point minus the first one. Yes. So it is xn minus xn plus? Plus 1. Are you seeing that? Yes. Now, when you, now this is now the gradient of this line, but now we want the derivative of the curve. Meaning for you to get the derivative of the curve from the first principle, you take the limit as that small change in x tends to 0, isn't it? Meaning, when you take limit as this change in x tends to 0, the derivative, the, the, the gradient of the curve turns to the derivative. Meaning this change in y over change in x now becomes the derivative, dy over dx. When this small change is not there, meaning you are getting a gradient at exactly one point in the curve. And that gradient at exactly one point in the curve is the derivative. Meaning, when change in x tends to when it is turning to 0, meaning when it is not there. Are you seeing? It is moving until it is disappearing to zero. When it is disappearing to zero, when this change is disappearing to zero, it means you will be at exactly one point. And so you are getting the derivative of curve at one point, isn't it? So the derivative of curve, the dy over the x, is now what is equal to f of xn over x of n minus x of n plus 1. Then I'll go back to the fundamental principles of calculus. This is the, this is the derivative. How do you know the derivative? You have the Leibniz notation and the Newton's notation, isn't it? Meaning we are saying, if you have y to be a function of x, according to the Leibniz notation, meaning y is a function of x is like y is equal to 2x plus 1. For you to get the derivative, meaning you are differentiating y with respect to x, isn't it? That is the Leibniz notation, isn't it? But now when you have y to be a function of x, if you want to get the derivative according to the Newton's notation, meaning the derivative of f of x is just denoted as f prime of x. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Meaning the derivative, meaning the derivative, dy, the derivative, the derivative, dy over the x is the same as f prime of x. This notation or this notation. Are you seeing that? Are we together? When you are differentiating, if y is a function of x, when you are differentiating y with respect to x, it's like saying dy over dx. So when differentiating y with respect to x, it's simply denoted as y prime of x. Are we together? So it means this dy over the x is as well denoted as the derivative of a function is prime, isn't it? So if you are differentiating a function f of x, it is f prime of x. Are you seeing that? Because these are in terms of it is xn. So this means it is f prime of xn. Meaning this is our change in y. These four values, remember they were xn, yn. xn, yn. We were using the n, isn't it? So it means this is f prime of xn. It will be equals to f of f of xn over xn minus xn plus 1, isn't it? So you now cross multiply, you take f of zero, the x's of zero, isn't it? So if you multiply, you get rid of this denominator, so it comes this side. Are we together? Yes. So you multiply both sides by what is the denominator? Yes. You get xn minus xn plus 1 times f prime of xn is equal to f of xn, isn't it? Then you divide both sides by this, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. You divide both sides by f prime of f prime of xn. So what do you end up with? You end up with xn minus 
xn plus 1 over f of xn then divide by f prime of xn. Are we together? Yes. Now we want the now here we have xn plus 1 to start and here we have xn. Like when I when I want if n is 0, so it means this is x0 minus x1. But now if I want x1 to subtract x0, it means when I will be starting from x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, I'd like to make the, the larger one to be the subject of the formula, isn't it? Meaning I want xn plus 1 to be the subject. Are you seeing that? So for me to make xn plus 1 to be the subject, see I multiply both sides of the equation by a negative. Isn't it? If I multiply both sides of this equation, with the negative, see negative into negative now, this one will now start. Isn't it? So we are we now have xn plus 1 minus xn to be equals to negative f of xn, then you differentiate it over f prime of xn. So if I take a negative xn on the other side of the equation, see it becomes positive. Are you see that? So in the end, I end up with xn plus 1 is equals to xn, then minus f of xn over f prime of xn and that is the Newton Maxwell's method for iteration xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus your f of xn bring over each derivative then you differentiate it are we together? now this is the Newton Maxwell's method but you are not going to use it that way this is how you are going to use it this is how you are going to use the Newton Raphson's formula. We've seen that if n is not there, you start like this. If I have x, okay, let me just say if I have xn plus 1 is equal to xn then it is minus, isn't it? Are we together? So I have our function f of x. Then if I differentiate it, then I differentiate it again, f prime of x, then I put my n there, isn't it? Are we together? Now, if you look at this formula we found, the next thing to make it more simpler is to look for the LCM, meaning you must know the formula first, isn't it? And in this case, you can see it is very simple, isn't it? It's just xn plus 1, is equals to xn minus the function, then over you differentiate the function, isn't it? Are we together? So you look for the LCM. So when you're looking for the LCM, meaning this is over 1, isn't it? So what is the LCM? Here we have xn plus 1 is equal to the LCM of 1 and this is just f prime of xn. See, that is the LCM of the two. Isn't it? 1 goes here, f prime of xn, isn't it? So f prime of xn times xn, xn f, f prime of xn. Are we together? Then it is my minus then f prime of xn goes here one six and eight so one times f of xn f of f of xn so you see this is now the simplest form of the newton rapsol's method meaning this one is simpler to master after you master the newton rapsol's formula then you look for the same when you want to use it are you see Meaning when you want to use a Newton Rapsol's formula, it should be in this form, the simplest form when you have the LCM. But now when you when you are writing it out, this is the simplest means of writing the Newton Rapsol's formula, isn't it? Then this is the simplest means of using it through an iteration until you get the root of a function, isn't it? Are we together? So the Newton Rapsol method is simply if you have xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. So f of x, if you differentiate it, you get this derivative, isn't it? There are people who have seen confusing that I mean it is xn plus 1 is equal to xn then minus f prime of x over f of x. No, it is f of x, then if you differentiate f of x, you get over its f derivative. You know how that is has come about. Are we together? Is that okay? Good. So we now want to use this formula to solve problem involving finding roots of different functions.